the kissing. We are back. It's the Alex Jones Show. I'm Jason Burma sitting in for the first hour. Alex will be up in the second, third, and fourth hours with Corsi, Tempany, and John Reese Davies. But without further ado, let's just cut to this Geithner clip where he just blatantly says, we can't audit the Fed. You can't know what we're doing. This is our country. This isn't yours, America. Hit it. And then uh, members of the community voted on those questions. I'm going to ask you the top 10. First one came from Borez, uh, B-O-R-E-Z. These people don't always uh, use their uh, real names, but that's his dig name. 1,134 digs. Why has the Federal Reserve Bank never been audited? You know, the, the Fed actually is subject to very compre comprehensive oversight by the Congress, by a series of external auditors, and it does play this very important role in the system, and that requires that Congress have the ability to do a very careful review of how it conducts its operations. But very important, as I'm sure people understand, that you want to keep politics out of monetary policy. And uh, there are good reasons for that. You know, we went through centuries of financial crisis in the United States, at least two, before the Fed was established. Those crises were in, produced in part by the fact that we didn't have a central bank that had independence, ability to deal with these kind of things. And you need to keep those kind of things away from you know, political influence that can compromise uh, the effectiveness of policy. But as this shows, there clearly is a group of people out there that feels very passionately about this. Uh, the third question on the list was 712 digs was from Moto Bike Man, who said, what is your position on Ron Paul's House Resolution 1207, which, as I understand it, calls for a comprehensive audit of the Fed. Why does this persist uh, if, as you say, the Fed is already fully audited? Well, the Fed, Fed is dramatically more transparent than it was, is subject to very comprehensive oversight and audits. But there are certain things about what the Fed does that, again, you need to make sure that you preserve as independent political influence. And that line is an, a line that we don't want to cross. And I think that even, even the sponsor of that bill recognizes how important it is to us to have the Fed independent of politics. And I'm sure many of the people concerned about the Fed's role in the system will understand that it would be problematic for the country if you let uh, politicians come in and uh, shape conduct of monetary policy in the country. You don't want to cross the line, but do the, does this kind of concern indicate that maybe the line needs to be moved, that maybe well, the, the Fed needs yeah. to be more transparent right. than it's been in the past? Yeah, I do. I think it's very important, and I think this chairman has, been, uh, has gone a long way to open up the workings of the Fed so that people can assess them. And remember, what the Fed does every day, people can see and they make their judgment about whether they're having the right impact in terms of making sure we're sustaining growth with low inflation. The, that, those actions uh, you know, are subject to the test of the market, public opinion, really every day, every hour. You can see, people can judge for themselves whether the Fed is doing what it's supposed to do under the laws of the land. Well, some of them clearly don't like what they see. Uh, the ninth question on the list was from Zwendkas, uh, 357 digs. Uh, he, he wrote, uh, you are a member of the Federal Reserve. I think he meant you were a member of the uh, Federal Reserve, a group that so thoroughly mismanaged our monetary policy that they helped create a massive housing bubble. All right, let's cut the clip right the there. I mean, this numbers. is equivalent to somebody standing over a lifeless, bloody body with the dagger in hand, blood all over his shirt, all over his pants, saying, we don't need to investigate. We're very transparent. We're very transparent. We are trans. That is the new word. We're very transparent. We won't tell you what banks got the money, how much money we're printing, who our buddies are, who our cronies are, how the system works. I'll just sit here and lie to you and tell you Congress has oversight. Meanwhile, Ron Paul is part of the Congress, folks, for the really small minded, you know, individuals out there that just kind of came across this program, have no idea what's going on in the real world. Let me explain how this works. This guy tells you Congress already has oversight. Congress does not. They should. This is a private institution. They'll tell you it's a quasi-government institution, please. I mean, this guy just stood up there and said, we had centuries of economic misfortune and disaster before the Federal Reserve. No, the Federal Reserve came in after the bankers promulgated crises to consolidate power, and now they are consolidating it Further, then he goes on to lie to you and tell you that Congress already has oversight, but we don't want to make it political. You don't want to make it political. You are our monetary system. Of course that's political. You are political by default. What you don't want to do is tell us where the money went because then it does become 
more transparent to the American public that you are dirty, dirty criminals, cutthroat psychopaths who work for offshore banks. That's the reality, Mr. Geithner. And he'll sit there and smile. and <laughs> It's very easy for him to do that with a one-on-one -on -one pushover. Put me in a room with Geithner. Put me in a room with Geithner with 100 people that recently lost their homes and jobs. And I guarantee he won't be snickering and smirking so much. All right, folks. Uh, from that video to the next, I want to uh, queue up uh, my Invisible Empire trailer. I've been working real hard on this film. I continue to work hard. By the way, everybody's freaking out about the winter 2010 date. That means February 2010. I originally was going to release this on Christmas Eve. I uh, didn't get the graphics guy in here until about two weeks ago. Really want to polish this movie up. Really want to give it a look. Really want to make this the definitive movie on global government and the New World Order. And that's why we're calling it Invisible Empire, a New World Order Defined. And, uh, yes, yeah, some of the clips have been seen before, but I'm pretty sure no one's ever heard the, uh, I mean, they've, they've seen the quote by FDR about the New World Order and, uh, this is not new in order. Uh, in in the monument, but never has the speech been out there. I dug that up. Uh, some of the Zbigniew uh, Brzezinski clips look brand new to me. I haven't seen them anywhere on YouTube. Uh, let me try to think what else is in there that's brand new. The George Bush disorder comment, that comes from a whole speech out at Maxwell Air Force Base, which was his commencement address on the New World Order. There's a lot of clips that are going to be in the film from that. Uh, I mean, in this film, I've got John Kerry saying New World Order, Hans Blick saying New World Order, the CEO of Google saying New World Order, Cornell West saying New World Order. Again and again and again, these political figures of power are using this term. So what is this term? Why are they using it? Why does it seem to progress throughout history? And why does it always seem to be promoted by madmen hell-bent on world domination? Here it is, the trailer for Invisible Empire. 